Hello and welcome again to the reflection for today. The reading today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, an important message about his thoughts about Jesus and his relationship with his father. It is easier to get your head round this message if you read it in a modern colloquial translation because Paul has this dreadful habit of getting all his sentences extremely long. I keep wanting to tell Paul to use more full stops. So this is Romans chapter 15, starting at verse 14, according to the Message Bible. Personally, I've been completely satisfied with who you are and what you're doing. You seem to me to be well motivated and well instructed, quite capable of guiding and advising one another. So, my dear friends, don't take my rather bold and blunt language as criticism. It's not criticism. I'm simply underlining how very much I need your help in carrying out this highly focused assignment God has given me. This priestly and gospel work of serving the spiritual needs of the non-Jewish outsiders so they can be presented as an offering acceptable to God, made whole and holy by God's Holy Spirit. Looking back over what has been accomplished and what I have observed, I must say I am most pleased. In the context of Jesus, I even say proud, but only in that context. I have had no interest in giving you a chatty account of my adventures, only the wondrously powerful and transformingly present words and deeds of Christ in me that triggered a believing response among the outsiders. In such ways, I have trailblazed a message of the message, a preaching of the message of Jesus all the way from Jerusalem far into northwestern Greece. This has all been pioneer work, bringing the message not only into those places where Jesus has not yet been known and worshipped. My text has been, those who were never told of him, they'll see him. Those who have never heard of him, they'll get the message. Immediately you realise that Paul is incredibly enthusiastic about his mission to bring the good news of Jesus to the Gentiles the non-Jews. He doesn't want to tell the Romans about all the exciting things he has experienced in his travels. He doesn't want to bring out his holiday photos. He doesn't want to encourage them to go and see the wonders of the world. All Paul wants to do is tell them about the strength of faith that he has found amongst the Greeks of northwest Greece, how the Holy Spirit went before him and people who had never heard of Jesus had come to faith. Paul's words had been those of the Holy Spirit and so they were powerful and transforming. I was talking to a friend about Iona recently. Uh, Iona I mean by the island off the side of the Isle of Mull in the Western Isles of Scotland. When Columba came to Iona from Ireland he was sent by the Holy Spirit to preach to the Scots and the people of the north of England. And he established an abbey on Iona. And from there, he and his monks went all over the borders of Scotland and down into England, at least halfway down. Columba's ministry was very similar to Paul's. He was preaching to pagans who worshipped multitudes of gods. And unlike the Jewish Christians, they had no concept of there being only one God. Columbus pagans worshipped gods of the rivers, gods of the trees, gods of the mountains, gods of the seas. Paul's Greeks worshipped all the Greek gods of antiquity. Zeus, Hera, Aphrodite and the rest. All assigned to different jobs to look after warriors, families, food resources and so on. Both Paul and Columba had to show the people they were talking to that these gods were not only not real, but they were also powerless and useless. 
Whereas the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ not only was real, but he is the creator and sustainer of the universe. This has led me to think about the gods that are all around us, that are false and powerless, that people we know lean on for their strength. The obvious gods of money and power, celebrity and infamy, and the less obvious gods of self-sufficiency and other people's good opinion. We have to recognise those gods so that we can show them up for what they are, worthless. The god that Paul worshipped is so powerful that our imaginations can't cope. The god Columba worshipped loves the human race too much and sent his son to rescue us. The God that I worship, and I hope that you do too, wants me and you to pass on that message of the good news of Christ to the next generation and to the lost generation that also hasn't heard of him. Let's pray to that God that loves us so very much. Almighty God, help us to step into Paul's shoes and respond to your call to take the love of God into our communities and families. Help us to speak out about how much God has done for us and to rejoice in the fact that the Holy Spirit walks with us all our days. Amen. Have a lovely week. The weather looks as though it should be good for a little while at least. Keep safe. God bless.